Hi, this video is going to show you how you can create your own media sharing station like the one you see here, where you have an attractor screen, you have a video sequence item showing all the videos that have been recorded. Um, it also works with photos as well. It will include a media browser screen um, where the users can pick their videos and photos for uh, scanning with QR codes on the show video and show photo screens. So I'm going to start from scratch with this and show you how you can design it. So I'm going to create a sharing station event. Now that can only be done in Right Booth version 7.7 .7 or newer. So if you've got a, an older version of Right Booth, you'll need to get the latest version off the website. So the way to do it then is to click the create button and here you will find a new option, create a sharing station event. So click that and click next. We're now into the event wizard where we can go through the steps of creating a sharing station event. So we'll click next. Now the first thing to consider is the start screen and you can enter a title for the start screen. Well, I'm going to leave it as it is, which is the video and photo sharing station. I'm also going to choose to include a ticker tape message. Now the ticker tape message is the one that scrolls text across the screen from left to right in this example. Now you can type the text in here, but I'm going to cheat. I've got it already written out here. So let me highlight this, edit copy, back over here, right click, paste. So I've got three lines of ticker tape text, which will scroll on one after the other. I'm also going to include a video sequence on the start screen. Now the video sequence is a sequence item which will show all the videos from the watch folder for this event. So every time a new video appears, it will be displayed on the start screen in a scrolling list. Uh, you can also include photo sequences as well if you wish, but I'm not going to do it for this example. Click next. Now, as well as sharing videos and photos by QR codes, which is primarily what the sharing station does, you can also use the station for printing photos using particular print templates. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that this time so you can see what happens. So I'm going to ask the user whether they want to be able to print their photos or not. Now, when you choose to include printing, you've got to obviously include a printer. I'm going to pick my Canon here. And then I'm going to choose a photo layout from the media library. So let's click this button. There are lots of print layouts to choose from. I'm going to pick this one here because we're dealing with single photos on a sharing station. Let's click OK. So if they do choose to print photos, each photo will be printed out on this print template. Let's click Next. We're now being asked if we want to include the thank you screen, so I may as well do that. Click next. We can now choose a background for the design of the sharing station. You can choose a color or an image or a video as a background. I'm going to choose an image. It takes us to the media library where all the uh, background images are. And in this example, I'm going to choose this one. Next. It's now suggesting a particular button style for use with this background. Now I'm not too happy about that one, so I'm going to change the style of the buttons. I'm going to go for a square outline white. Now with a square outline, it means that the icons are the wrong color really. So I'm going to change the icon color to outlined white or lined white. That's better. Let's click next. Uh, you can also change the fonts for all the prompts in the sharing station. So I'm going to stick with the example, which is uh, this, this font here. It's, there's lots of different fonts to choose from. Let's go for next. And I'm going to use English prompts throughout the sharing station event. Let's click next. So that's the wizard completed. I just have to click continue to create the actual event itself. Let's do that now. Okay, Right Booth has created a sharing station event, but it's not complete yet. We need to do some work on it. Let's go and have a look at what it's done. Well, first of all, it's named it as Event 18. 
Now, I really want to change that. So I'm going to save this first of all. I'm going to save it as, I'm going to call it sharing station one. Now, as you can see here, I've already got a sharing station. Uh, this is the one I created earlier, but I'm going to create a new one here and, and save it as sharing station one. So let's do that. There we go. Now, before I carry on editing this event, I just want to explain about the watch folder. So a sharing station watches a particular folder on your computer for the, um, for the arrival of videos and photos. Now, when you create your sharing station event to begin with, the watch folder will not have any videos in it usually. So if I go into edit, this is the start screen. This item here, is the video sequence item and it's not showing any videos because it's actually set to look at the watch folder. Similarly, if I go to the media browser screen, this item here, which will normally show you all the videos and photos is currently empty and not showing anything because again, the watch folder is empty. So where is the watch folder for this event? If I exit, let's go into the designer. Now here you can see in event type that Rightbooth has created a sharing station event and down here it has automatically specified the watch folder to be this web server root event file name both of which are enclosed in curly brackets. Now these are Rightbooth text variables. Web server root is actually specifying a path to the location where a package called WAMP server is installed and WAMP server is a local web server. Now I'm not going to explain anything about WAMP server in this video. There's a lot of information and step-by-step -step tutorials on how to install WAMP server. Now WAMP server installs itself into this folder c colon backslash WAMP64 backslash www. So this path is what this part of the watch folder definition is pointing at. Now this next bit, event file name, is actually this sharing station one. So it's actually a subfolder underneath the web server root. So I go back here, notice that Rightbooth has created this sharing station one subfolder in here. So, and as you can see, there's nothing in here. There's no files, no videos, no photos, but basically this path is what this is referring to. So let me just come back to here, look at this level. You can see I've been creating other event files and put and there are files in here. This is the sharing station demo video. This is where all the files are for that. Now, if I just take a couple of these, let's take these two, copy them, back up a level, back into here, right click, paste them in. I've now got two videos inside this watch folder for sharing station one. So if I go back to right booth and come out of here, you can see now, let's just go into the editor, that the two videos are being displayed in the video sequence item on the start screen. If we go to the media browser screen, you can see that it's showing two videos, thumbnails for the two videos. Let me come out of here again. I'm going to take all the videos and photos from sharing station one, copy them, and put them into sh st sharing station into this folder back into here and we should now have all of the items showing so just to repeat if I go back to this folder as you can see, as I add videos and photos into this folder, Rightbooth will automatically update the interface and show them 
in the sharing station. So let's carry on with some editing. I'm going to put this at the top. I'm going to reposition these text items. Put this down here. Look at the properties. I'm going to make it blink just to attract the user's attention. I'm going to increase the size of this item. Let's have a look at the properties for this item. I'm going to fade the edges. And obviously you can change everything to your heart's content. We can make the text of this bigger, for instance. We could change the color of this to say yellow. We could increase the size of this text. We could give it a gradient fill, maybe change that color and that color and so on. If I go to the media browser screen, I can start getting creative with this grid item. So as I said before, if I look at the properties, it's set to show two rows with three columns. Obviously I could make that two rows and two columns and so on. I could have three rows and three columns and so on. So I'll go for three columns, two rows, Let's make this a little bit bigger. Notice as I click on each one, it puts a highlighter on it, which is this color here. I can change that, I can make it bigger. It's probably a bit big, let's make it 10. We can make the gap bigger between them. We can add a frame around the images. On the show video screen, let's have a look at this. If I double click it, you can see that it's set to be a connect to Wi-Fi code and the QR code is automatically created by the settings that you put in for your router and you do that here let's just come out exit settings social media local web server and here we have the name which is the SSID name for your router, the password for the router, uh, Wi-Fi network and its encryption type which in my case is WPA2. So these values are used when creating that QR code and this QR code and, and as I say Rightbooth automatically generates this for you as part of the wizard. In terms of this QR code over here Let's have a look at this one, double click. This text is automatically generated by Rightbooth and it's the web server IP address which is automatically obtained from your router and the event file name which is the name of the subfolder for your local web server. So in this case it's sharing station one and then the QR code is appended with the name of the current photo that the user has chosen on the media browser screen. So this is all automatic, you don't need to change any of this, it's just so that you are aware of how this QR code is generated for you. 
if I go to the show video screen and look at the QR code for this one, it's the same path to the web server IP and the sharing station one subfolder, but this time it's a text plus video QR code. In other words, whichever video is chosen on the media browser screen is the name of the file for that video that will be appended to this path. We have a photo options screen, and as you can see, it's included the print layout and also a print button for that. And then there's the thank you screen. Another thing you might want to do is to add screen transitions to your sharing station. The way to do that is to look at the screen properties and look at the animation. Now at the moment it's none. I'm going to choose the one that I had in my demo video, which is shrink grow. Now watch what happens when I switch to the media browser screen. That's the shrink grow animation. Now it happens each time you change screens. Now because there's nothing on this screen in terms of animation, it won't happen when I go from here back to the start screen. So the point being that if you want to have this shrink grow animation between every screen, you need to apply it to each of the screens. So let's just do that quickly. And you could have a different one here, for instance. Probably better to have the same one on each screen, the same animation. And finally on the thank you screen. And that's it, I think. Let's have a look. Let's check they're all the same. So now it's just a case of editing your screens, making sure that everything is in the right place and the right color and the right size and so on. And then all you have to do is save your event, play the event, and Brother will then sit there waiting for videos to appear in the watch folder. Every time a new video appears, this panel will update itself whenever a user gets to it. So it automatically refreshes itself to show new videos as and when they appear or new photos as and when they appear in the station watch folder. And the station watch folder can receive videos from any other application that can write files into a Windows folder. That can be Rightbooth itself using a Rightbooth video recording event, or it could be from some other application that can send or copy files from one place to another on your computer. So I hope all this helps you to get going with your Rightbooth sharing station event. And as I said before, there is a much more comprehensive set of PDF tutorials which take you step by step through everything needed to create a sharing station event using the WAMP server local web server application and a router for setting up your own private Wi-Fi network. Thanks for watching.